Hello. Um, thank you for being here. But before uh, my talk, uh, I would like to, to, to thank all the staff for this conference and Tommy to, to have uh, organized that, uh, that event, which is a, a very great event. Uh, sorry, so I'm French. Uh, my English is not best as your, but uh, it will be okay. Like uh, I will speak as a like five years old child or Donald Trump, if you want. It's okay. Um, so my talk today will deal, yeah, with targeted attacks, so APT stuff like that. Uh, what we have seen during the last year, during the last conference, and uh, what we can ex expect for the the next years. So I don't know if uh, all of you know uh, what's great, uh, the great team. So it's a team uh, dedicated to, to do a lot of investigation related mainly to uh, targeted streets. Uh, we also have uh, good research uh, regarding reverse engineering, uh, industrial control systems, stuff like that. And uh, we also uh, investigate on banking threats and uh, some cybercrime stuff. And um, so we have different profile. We have like reverser. We have uh, men like me that uh, then uh, threat intel, etc. So this talk will not deal about like uh, uh, reverse engineering or stuff like that. But you you will have some source code of malware. So I have one question for you, is that uh, since the last event, do you remember uh, everything of, uh, of um, all of the events that occurred in the cyberspace, like WannaCry, stuff like that? Because to do a talk like that, it's quite ambitious and nearly impossible. If you see uh, the headline in the news, so you had many and many uh, different events from like Shamun, uh, Mirai, uh, the Macron leaks, uh, stuff like that. You have NotPetya, you have WannaCry, you have the Shadow Brokers leaks, uh, you have also Vault 7, stuff like that. So it's quite difficult to, to, to have a talk on each event and it's quite boring, uh, I think. So I will present you uh, stuff that um, uh, still, um, still allows an attacker to enter in network. And I will try to answer a few questions like where are the Chinese today? Because you, have lot of uh, you had a lot of reports on them and today you don't have uh, anything. Um, and other stuff like that. So here is a, a nice view on a, an iceberg, like why uh, speaking about uh, security events when you don't see anything. Um, for example, you have the publication at the top of the iceberg is publication in open source. So I also as uh, marketing stuff. Um, you have also great researchers that do a lot of things in that. Uh, you have private reports and researcher groups that uh, share uh, between them uh, IOC and stuff like that. And you have uh, at the bottom of the iceberg uh, all IOC that are not shared by victims. Uh, why they don't are shared? Uh, maybe it's uh, by shame because uh, of their customers. Maybe they don't know that the, the, the simple malware on the workstation is a part of a bigger thing. Um, and maybe uh, they don't know how to share with like their governments or uh, other actors in the same sector. So let's back to our business. Do you remember this name? It's all, it's all Chinese attackers group, not all because uh, you have many names by many vendor, but since like 2010, you had many publications on them. APT1, uh, Blackvine, uh, stuff like that. And today, since like the beginning of the year, I count like five blog posts on them and one uh, report, public report, uh, and a good report uh, from the BIO system guy. So where are they? Why we don't see them? 
So there is a lot of speculation regarding that. Um, we see a major decrease of Chinese attacks, so, and there is a major decrease of reports. So maybe it's the 13 five years plan. I don't know if you are uh, very um, familiar with China, but uh, uh, each five years they, uh, they do uh, like a plan in order to, um, to do strategic orientation. So you, have, uh, you had this plan in 2016, uh, and it, it just draw a strategic orientation regarding like transport, renewable energy, uh, military stuff, etc. You have also the PLA military reform, so it's the military, um, um, the Chinese military reform that focused, this reform focused and checked many units in the PLA. So um, maybe uh, the units in like the IPT1 report doesn't exist anymore. Uh, you have also, uh, with some hypothesis, the, uh, some agreements of non-aggression with different countries like Russia or USA after the OPM Act. And um, maybe analysts can, uh, like me have switched to more like sexy things, uh, maybe Russia, US, stuff like that. Or maybe they are still attacking our network and we don't see them. Why we don't see them? Because uh, we had a lot of public and private reports and our mind today uh, are, is focused on like APT targeted attacks is definitely uh, linked with spear phishing. The problem is that uh, most of the case that uh, I have uh, been able to, to work on uh, relies uh, during the last years with like frontal compromise yeah, like web shell, it's a, like it's 32 bytes, I think. Um, and this type of web shell is very good because it's stealthy, is passive. So you have a lot of, uh, of, of uh, security editors that say, oh, we have seen a passive malware, very sophisticated. But that type of web shell, you can you can put it on any web server inside the entity, and it can, they, like some Chinese group, just put them and answer their OPSEC, their op operational security with your own security. Because what they do is they put it on some web server that they have SSL. So you don't see anything, and the implant is still here for many years. Uh, you have also some trends like compromise of suppliers. Um, the report of BIO regarding uh, Cluduper uh, was like that. So Cluduper is uh, one of the campaigns related to uh, the Menopass guy. It's a very like old Chinese APT. APT. And um, so you have different way to, to compromise a company, but uh, Passing through suppliers is, is very good because you can have directly uh, VPN access. You can go with RDP. You can just uh, access to like SharePoint or stuff like that. So it's it's quite easy, and many of them are not so secure. Um, you have also, and it's a it's a, a very old trick, but uh, webmail phishing with. Uh, with phishing regarding webmail, and not only like Chinese actors do all the, those things, uh, like uh, SoFacy Group do that a lot. Uh, it allows you like, to, um, to pass uh, through, uh, through VPN, stuff like that, and try to grab some information. Uh, you have trapping legitimate installers that uh, we have seen like, quite recently with the Shadowpad uh, malware. And uh, many attackers group do that, like uh, in, um, in 2014, I, I, if I remember well, you have the Avex guy, Dragonfly guy, that uh, have done that. And so, noisy spear phishing with like zip attachment, stuff like that, we don't see any more like related to Chinese actor, but it still exists, it still exists. Uh, by many attackers do that, and they do also a lot of other things. 
And of course, uh, inside the network, uh, attacker for, don't, don't, for uh, people that don't know how, they, how uh, a man or a team penetrate the network, they judge really on uh, open source tools and uh, like uh, Microsoft uh, has uh, good tools for that, uh, like PowerShell, uh, RDP, etc. After that, you have many and many, uh, today you have many and many uh, cyber mercenary that are targeting also uh, private entities. And what we have seen is that they are more and more difficult to track because like when you have like APT1 uh, in front of you or any state uh, backed actor, uh, they, they rely on very easy procedure in their infrastructure, in their malware, they, they use uh, uh, every time the same code with, and it's quite easy to get, uh, to end them in a network. For cyber mercenaries, like a red, it's like red teaming, they are free for, and uh, they do the infrastructure, malware, and the operational compromise. Uh, they, are, they don't have any AV procedure, so it's very difficult to track them. After that, they, they use today a lot of open source tools, like you can go on, on, um, on Google and type like Python backdoor and GitHub, and you will see all of the projects uh, on uh, like Python, uh, Python by, uh, backdoor. And uh, they also really on uh, like uh, partitioned infrastructure. So you can't uh, take like one, one C2 and try to find the rest of the infrastructure. It's very difficult. But so you have cyber mercenary that can be uh, related to some governments in order to defeat attribution. Uh, but some other cyber mercenary are just looking for your money. Um, today we have some trends like um, um, some, some actors just use botnet to deploy bile and telloid uh, malware on high value targets. It I've seen like uh, during the last year with Drydex, which is a banking trojan. Uh, that have um, dropped like Carbonac on, on some high value targets. Uh, you have also uh, targeted ransomware. So today ransomware are like, uh, okay, we, we go and uh, spread the word with, uh, with ransomware. But I think that in, uh, in, few, um, in few months or year, I think it, it will be months, uh, we will see once ransomware that when they are on a workstation, they will decide, okay, are we uh, linked to an active directory? There is possibilities just to, um, to pivot on the network and try to, um, to, to ask for a ransom according to what company uh, we have uh, compromised. Also, you have a North Korea actor uh, that have compromised, like, uh, I don't remember, it was uh, with a watering hole against uh, one of the Polish financial institution, and they try to compromise, like, banks, uh, carters, so cyber criminals, and uh, many actors uh, who deals with money. The fact is today uh, there is no more uh, sophistication gap between like cyber masonry and most of the state sponsored attack. And what's up so regarding nation, nation states? So you have thousands and thousands of countries uh, that have developed uh, cyber capabilities. Um, you, are, you just, uh, to, to know that, you just have to like look at uh, the Akik team's uh, leaks and see uh, the list of their customers. It's quite impressive. And their cyber arsenal, arsenal is no longer uh, dedicated to only cyber espionage, but um, they, are, um, they, are do, they do some research regarding how to distribute uh, a country. Uh, we, we had some examples uh, just a uh, few months before with NotPetya and WannaCry. 
But if you look uh, during the time, you had also obviously Stuxnet and uh, some attacks like against uh, the Turkey uh, DNS um, name servers with a DDoS attack when um, Turkey just shut down um, had sh uh, sh shut down a, a, a Russian uh, plan. So we will not, I think, uh, in the next years, uh, we will not uh, arrays of uh, false flag operation, as we have seen like with uh, TV5 words, and uh, different link uh, in order to, to direct uh, and um, disturb like election, stuff like that. And of course, and you will see just after, uh, more and more uh, state attackers don't look uh, to develop uh, their own tool, but they will rely on open source tools and uh, PowerShell stuff, stuff like that. So why requiring sophisticated uh, codes and exploit where the door are still open? Let's see this code. It's uh, like, it's a code, so I think that every sysadmin, pentester in this room will recognize that. It's in PowerShell. It's a very little backdoor, 28 line of PowerShell, uh, with uh, just one aim, is to get a payload on a remote server, um, decrypt it and execute it. Like, uh, I don't know how many times, and restart this backdoor. So with that, you can do everything. Uh, they, they have some obsec failure in that, because if, I don't know if you know that, but uh, this HTTP request will not have any user agents. So one advice is to drop any HTTP request that um, that uh, that uh, uh, come out of your network in order to stop uh, like PowerShell downloader or backdoor like that. So and at the end of this uh, little script, they restart just their backdoor. And why they do that is just in order to to prevent. Uh, some information uh, leaking in memory. And uh, this backdoor was used and dropped uh, by some documents. So you have, uh, I don't think that you see uh, very well uh, the document, but regarding NATO, Ukraine conflict and stuff like that. And today uh, we are still like investigating on it, but uh, there is some ties like in the infrastructure with uh, the SOFACI guys. So maybe they are testing new stuff. Uh, maybe uh, it's, uh, it's not a test, uh, but uh, it's interesting to see some actors that try to, to, to innovate with new thing. So I, I will take water because the beer is... Uh, the next question is, do we have reached the tangent, the tangent in uh, cyber espionage operation and toolkits? I will explain why. Is that when you see a Yara rule like that? I don't think that everybody is familiar with Yara rules, but it's a, it's a rule for like pattern matching against malware, and uh, we use that in uh, in a lot of things, you can do a lot of things with that. Uh, malware clustering, you can catch malware on networks, on memory, um, dumps, uh, stuff like that. And so you have a rule that was um, one part of the root time of uh, the equation uh, malware in order to decrypt their payload. The fact is the equation group uh, use this um, method and the, the, quite the same keys in every uh, equation malware. So it's, it was quite easy for any, um, any security researcher to grab, like in the noise of virus total or, or any, uh, any malware repository, equation malware. And so a simple Yara rule like that can catch many, many equation malware, and we can discover many, many victims. So many years of intelligence operation, because 
like most of the security researchers, uh, are thinking about how well for Stuxnet it was like uh, 10 guys during six months, but no, the equation malware and stuff like that, they were employed during years and years and years in intelligence operation. And it was quite bad for uh, the actor being hit because we can just discover all of the victims of uh, this operation. So uh, here is, a, I think it's a, a famous map of the victim of equation malware. So you have years of intelligence operation that are, uh, are just uh, broke by simple errors. And we have seen during the previous, um, during the previous year, many and many leaks regarding like some toolkits, thanks to shadow brokers, whoop, yeah, it's okay. Thanks shadow broker, Vault7, etc. And uh, we think uh, that um, the attacker will think different regarding that using like cyber criminal, just uh, they, they, they will use like open source tool, stuff like that, even like for long, uh, long time uh, cyber espionage operation. Also, they will relaying or fourth party collections. Uh, I think that every one or not is aware of that. Fourth party collection, uh, as mentioned by uh, the Snowden documents, is just uh, when you have malware on the workstation, you 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 try with SIGINT to interact with it, or simply to uh, to um, to get data that uh, is exchanged between the malware and its CTU. And if you remember Drydex and Carbonac, uh, you have exactly the same. Uh, exactly the same uh, stuff in like Snowden Docs. Um, if I remember the name, it's, it was Defiant Warrior. And uh, it was not like today, it was uh, in 2010. So we are, we are late uh, regarding that. And I think that most of the focus of actors that have very good SIGINT uh, stuff and operation, they will focus on the three topics. How to use like uh, open source malware beaconing in, in order to get inside network uh, without being seen, and how to get um, um, expedited data just by fourth party collection. Uh, I think that uh, it's all, um, so thanks for your attention. And to conclude, uh, I have just one word, is that, okay, I work for, uh, for an antivirus company, stuff like that, but uh, remember one thing, uh, is uh, sharing is caring, and uh, if you work like for private entity, uh, private entities, um, uh, governmental too, etc. Don't be shy to exchange many of IOC. So you have different stuff. Uh, like for us name, uh, many people uh, exchange like uh, IOC, uh, MD5 Ash, SHA-1, stuff like that, but they don't uh, share like the attacker's host name. And for hunting inside the network, it's very cool because you just have to look on your event log and see if there is not uh, a strange host, host name. And you can also diff uh, the host name in the event log, RDP event log, for example, and, um, and uh, the existence host name on your network. And you will see, uh, I think, pretty bad things. And after that, uh, infrastructure, but with dates, uh, etc. PowerShell, WVME, accounts created on the Active Directory. It's a, it's a good source of, uh, of things just to hunt uh, bad guys very quickly inside the network. So thank you very much.